Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Hippo Regius, where our stalwart Roman expedition is conquering city after city from the Vandals. However, the Sardinians are making inroads into the west. We can't be everywhere at once, and the Romans can't defend their lands once we take them for them. So we are going to have to go back to Carthage, but first we're going to go south and try to finish off the Vandals and then direct our attention toward the Sardinians. I am Marcus Aurelius, and this is Total War, The Last Roman, and History. And in the last episode, we discussed the time periods between the Battle of Dara, where Belisarius was a magnificent success, and the Battle of Callinicum, which we will discuss in this episode. So what's our plans here? We have to basically move our expedition down south here to take Thagaste, and then we'll move over to... Or actually, we're going to have to go all the way to to Sirta and then over to Thagaste because we already have Bula Regia, even though there are some rebels spawning. Hopefully, the Romans can take care of their problems. That would be nice. God guide my Let's get some experience here. Success. Excellent. Didn't do much for us, but again, we're just trying to get experience. And we could build something here. Officers tents would improve integrity and wealth. Public latrines would improve integrity and expedition growth, which is important. Yeah. We don't have latrines. So let's do the latrines. We have so much money, which is great. I just wish we... I wonder if we could just start a new force. Raise forces. I mean, we could do that. Ah, but there's not enough surplus population. See, that's the problem. We have the money to raise a new army, which would be very helpful to us, but we don't have the manpower. Oh, well. Our troops need a little bit of time to refresh. So as I mentioned at the end of the last episode, Belisarius was escorting the Persians out of Roman land. The Persians did not want to mess with the Romans, and Belisarius, for his part, was happy just to watch them leave. He didn't want to necessarily engage them in a fight. However, his troops were spoiling for a fight. And I mentioned in the last episode, in a quote from Lord Mahon, that confidence in an army is a good thing. But confidence in the commanders is often a negative thing because they're not going to be cautious and they're going to make rash decisions that might prove to be a problem. And the Sardinians, in a feat of amazement here, are attacking the city, both of my armies. This is nuts. All right, well, let's see what happens. Either the Sardinians are just amazingly powerful, or I just don't know what to do here. Are there? For two little provinces, they are certainly creating a huge amount of armies. I mean, look at all these naval ships. Now, the problem here is going to be the same problem that we had when they attacked Carthage the first time. Is that we're going to be farther away from the city than they are. So we're going to have to count on the defenders, our allies, to defend the city. And where the heck are we here? There we go. So you can see there they are coming from here, whereas we're going to be here. And if they take the city before my reinforcements can get there, then all is lost. And as you can see, we just took the city, so these troops are incredibly weak. We already have a barn on fire or something. So we definitely want to barricade there. And there. So that way, even if they land here, the only way they can really get in without destroying the barricade is up here, which is kind of where our troops are going to be coming from. The real plan, though, is going to be 
keeping this place safe. So, archers, I guess. Oh, I can't command you because you're allies? Oh, great. All right. The enemy tremble before our superior numbers. Well, that's good. Because they're not going to be trembling at our exhaustion as we run into the city. Alright, last time I lost a lot of cavalry because I rushed them in. And wow, look at all these people, all these vandal vandals. I guess they're working for the Sardinians. The Sardinians are kind of a vandal sub-faction. We have to at least wait till our troops get out onto the field. Come on, guys. All right. The enemy has engaged our ally. All right, they're already fighting our allies' navy. That's not good for us. Let's pause the battle real quick, and let's just get our forces situated. So first things first, I want the spearmen. Those are axemen, no. All right, let's get them in the front. Okay. And then behind them, let's get our different groups of melee swordsmen. I'm not doing anything fancy right now. I'm just putting them in ranks based on what their preferred weapon is. Okay. Now let's go with our Slavic Axemen. And finally, our two generals. And our cavalry, which is not very extensive at this point. Maybe more are coming. Hopefully more are coming. Let's take a look at our army. Moving along, okay. It looks like we are getting some more cavalry, which is good. So let me read to you from Procopius exactly what was going on right before the Battle of Kalinicum. Because, again, Belisarius did not want to battle, but the troops were starting to call him a coward, and they were being egged on by their commanders. So it really wasn't... The story is that the troops really wanted to fight. But at the end of the day, the troops were just really high morale, and their commanders, who were probably more political and wanted their share of the glory, were like, Belisarius, you're a coward. He's not leading you correctly, men. We need to stand up for our interests. We need to beat these Persians back. And so, buoyed by the egging on of their commanders, the troops essentially were going to mutiny. And so, Belisarius kind of came back and tried to... tried to get them to see reason, right? So, this is exactly what he said, according to Procopius. Whither would you urge me? The most complete and most happy victory is to baffle the force of an enemy without impairing our own. And this favorable situation, we are already placed. Is it not wiser to enjoy the advantages thus easily acquired than to hazard them in the pursuit of more? Is it not enough to have altogether disappointed the arrogant hopes with which the Persians set out for this campaign and compelled them to a speedy and shameful retreat. So basically, he was explaining to these troops that they had far more to lose than to gain by a battle with the Persians. Because if they won the battle, the Persians would be defeated, but they were already on their way out, and they would also lose a ton of Roman soldiers. However, if they lost the battle, then the Persians would be free to terrorize the local countryside and the Romans would have nowhere else to go. 
So he tried to get the troops to understand this. But, again, their commanders were egging them on, and so they continued to taunt and belittle Belisarius. So finally, seeing that there was a mutiny on the horizon, Belisarius caved in, but he did it cleverly. He said, oh men, don't worry, I was just testing your resolve. I was just testing you to see if you were really truly brave and, and ready for this battle, and now that I see that you are, we're ready to go, essentially. So the battle became known as the Battle of Kalinicum, and it was on the edges of the Euphrates River, and it took place on Easter Day, Easter Sunday, April the 19th of 351. And this is relevant because in this time period, Christians fasted on Easter. So the troops were not only tired from the long march and following the Persians, but they also were weak due to hunger. But again, full of morale because they had seen so many victories in the recent past. And let's just see here. The defenders are pretty much just getting destroyed. And the Vandal Cavalry is in the city. The towers are doing their thing, though. I love towers. All right. Let's pause here. I forgot about my archers. That was dumb. But it's okay. And what we need to do, essentially, is get ourselves to a defensive position and then secure the center of town. We do have some allies there. Okay, so as I mentioned before, this is the main entrance up into the square from this side of town. So we need to get our troops here in a hurry. Let's do that. While the rest of our troops, let's get them if we can. Well, they're, yeah, the Vandal Cavalry is already here. We don't want to be too... Let's just do that, and we'll kind of keep an eye on things. Because our, yeah, our allies, they're already, they've already made it to the thing. They're going to definitely take the city center. We might lose this battle. Even though we could win it militarily, we might lose it simply by victory points. It's happened before. All right. But our first unit of spearmen are in. And... I guess we could engage these Moorish cavalry, but they seem to be getting pretty nailed by the towers. And they're already fleeing. Alright, this is kind of disorganized here, but we'll do what we can. Who's in the lead here? We have some Limitane. They're not going to be able to do much. Well, actually, they have Frenzy. Let's use that. These guys have Encourage. Excellent. Meanwhile, the Vandals are just terrorizing the city, burning everything down. This is going to be kind of a slog, but at least we have the towers on our side. We were able to, we were able to save the towers, and we have other troops coming in here to perhaps save these towers. We're better troops than they are, but, and these are just marauders, but we weren't able to get into Testudo or anything, so we just have to be careful. I don't know why we have our numerous Fartane there, why they're coming up here, but they're fighting cavalry on their own, but at least we have the tower. Okay, let's engage their swordsmen with our swordsmen. See if we can engage their cavalry with our spearmen. No, you guys come here, please. You guys too. Alright, so the towers are actually helping us quite a bit. Which is good. Alright, pause for a second. Let's see. The problem we've got here is maneuverability. So more infantry isn't necessarily going to make the situation better. We can move them inside, but 
we're going to have to use them intelligently. But what we could use, what could help us a lot, actually, are our archers. If we can get them in the city and on the walls, then we could start shooting at the enemy. The Axemen, do you have? You have Frenzy too? Alright, let's see if we can't take down their cavalry since their cavalry are kind of engaged. Not able to charge or anything. And despite being strung out, these guys are actually hurting the cavalry here. Let's, let's see if we can't back up. Use the whip. Uh, too late. We're gonna... Yeah, we're... This is too many. We're gonna lose too many guys. They're already getting a little bummed out. Up here we're doing really well though. However, we lost the battle because they were able to capture the city center. That is a shame. But what can we do? I mean, this is the one thing I really hate about this campaign and being a horde in general is that you can't actually defend a city from inside of it. You have to run into it. Like, as you can see, we have more men. We killed more men. But, unfortunately for us, they weren't fighting us. They were fighting the stupid defenders of the city. So now they have Hippo. Alright, so the Sardinians have three full stacks here. Along with Carthage, Hippo, although the Romans still have this area down here. For the moment. And we can't really do much against Hippo because they'll be able to fight three armies against all of ours and we'll be having to siege it. So... I'm interested to see what their plans are. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to... We're not going to encamp, because that means we can't help each other in battle, unfortunately. But let's see if we can't... First of all, let's get rid of this. Well, he's a Berber. I guess they're okay. But there's a Vandal guy there. See if we can deceive him. Failure, unfortunately, but a good failure. A failure that you learn from. I am yours to command. And there we go. Now we're good assassins. A stupid phlegmatic assassin, but a good a good stupid phlegmatic assassin, huh? Is that all we can really do? If we are not in encampment mode, we can't refresh. But again, the reason why oh we're not yeah, we're not gaining troops either because they own the city. I don't normally do this, but we have a lot of money, so we'll merge everyone we can, which actually isn't that many, and maybe we can pick up a mercenary. Desert Bowmen and Desert Hurlers. Ugh. Alright. We're getting really desperate here. Ready for orders. And we can get two mercenaries here, so I guess we're going to take the Bowmen, and that's all we got. All right. So we're just going to hang out. See what they do. Maybe they'll split up their forces. Again, not entirely sure why the Sardinians are so powerful. So I'm going to put up on the screen a map that I actually made myself of the Battle of Kalinicum. I have seen other maps in the books I was reading, my sources. And there was one on the internet that was like in a non-English language. But I decided to just make my own. And it's it's simple, but... What you have to understand is they were on the bank of the Euphrates River, and the land was sloping upward as it moved away from the river. So the troops by the river were lower than the troops far away from the river, okay? Now, Belisarius, in a very bad decision, decided to be at the bottom, right next to the infantry who were the anchor point, right on the river, and then there was Belisarius. So unlike the Battle of Dara, he did not have a good position to see what the enemy was doing. Therefore, he couldn't react to the movements that they made. 
The troops that they had on the high ground, on the far end of their line, were actually their allies, the Ghassanids, and they were squared off against the Persians' allies, the Lachmans. Now, I mentioned in the last episode that the Lachmans in general and their king were a little bit stronger and more powerful than the Ghassanids, at least in this time, and so they eventually just charged right into them. And the rest of the Persian line was all cavalry. They were the Savaron cavalry. So the Lachmids ran straight up against the Ghassanids. The Persian Savaron kind of remodeled themselves, moved around, so that they backed up the Lachmids. They basically had a heavy charge to their left flank, the Roman right flank, and the Ghassanids panicked and fled. They got the much better of that, or the worse of that battle, that exchange. So at that point, with the Ghassanids completely fleeing, it allowed the Persian cavalry to get around and behind the Roman line, which included cavalry and infantry. There was some infantry from uh, Asia Minor. I think they're called Lyconians. They were like, how to explain them? They were not Isarians, but they were from the highlands around Cappadocia and that region there. So they basically were surrounded and slaughtered by the Persians. So at this point, all the Roman cavalry took off, fled the field. It was a fiasco. And the infantry formed... Let me see if I can show you here with the... The infantry formed... Like, this is the river. The infantry formed a formation like this, where they were blocked on one side by the river and they formed a horseshoe-shaped thing in order to stop the Persian advance. And they essentially held out like this until nightfall where they crossed the river. Now... There are two versions of this story. In Procopius' version, Belisarius dismounted from his horse and fought with the infantry till the end, until everybody finally escaped at nightfall. Now, in another telling of the story, I forget by whom, I'll put it up on the screen in text, but Belisarius fled along with the rest of the cavalry. Now, this is interesting because there was an inquiry after this battle as to Belisarius' organization, at how he handled the battle. His, uh, his behavior during the battle. And it was Procopius' testimony, probably, that, that got him not in trouble by saying, no, no, he stood there and fought till the end. So it was very politically motivated. And at this point, Procopius probably still really liked Belisarius a lot. And he's very favorable toward Belisarius in his histories, but if you read the secret history, he's got some criticisms as well. But I think at this point, he was working for Belisarius. He probably assumed that if Belisarius went down, he'd probably go down with him. So his testimony was a lot more favorable. So we don't know. We honestly don't know what actually took place. But uh, Ian Hughes believes that it was the other story that was probably correct. That Belisarius actually fled the battle instead of staying and fighting. So this, of course, didn't change anything. The Persians continued leaving Roman lands. They didn't want any more to do with it. And they had also lost troops in the battle, although not many. So they left the Roman lands, the Romans were able to regroup, it was a fiasco, they lost the battle, they lost a lot of troops, but strategically it didn't really make a big difference one way or the other. But I'd like to think that Belisarius learned something from it, and learned that you can't, you gotta stay on top of your men. Just in case the men are eager to fight, if you know better, and you know they shouldn't, you need to have discipline and ensure that, that they don't get into a fight that they can't win, otherwise you could lose a lot. And I think you could tell by the way he leads his men and how he communicates with them on the way to North Africa and during the battles in North Africa that he learned that lesson. So anyway, Belisarius was recalled at this period to Constantinople. He was no longer the Magister Militum. In the next episode, we are going to talk about what took place in Constantinople once he was recalled, that being the Nika riots, which was a uh, political event involving Justinian, Theodora, and Belisarius, and it uh, kind of gives you a window into what was going on in Constantinople, the heart of the Roman Empire at this period, politically, because we all we focus on really, we're focusing on the wars with the Persians, the wars with the Vandals, but there's a lot going on on the home front as well, and so in the next episode, we'll speak about that, and hopefully we'll be able to take Hippo Regius back, because it looks like the Sardinians have all fled, so we can just take the city but again, we can't hold it. Bulla Regia looks like it was taken by the rebels. The Romans are just in shambles here. So we're just going to try to take the city, take Sirta, take Thagaste, take Bulla Regia. And at that point, we might have to go back to Hippo. Who knows? But once again, ladies and gentlemen, I'm Marcus Aurelius. This is Total War, The Last Roman, and History. I'd like to thank you very much for watching. Have a good one.